Welcome to episode 77 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues Terrorism. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery, recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and then apply that to the topic of liberty. But speaking is not enough. It is important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Tubb, Pastor Tubb is a father of three, and he shares a similar vision to me when it comes to communicating the message of liberty, and that's to prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for season three of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed on how libertarians view terrorism, and we'll discuss the latest in libertarian social media disagreement. With that, let's go ahead and dive right in. You're crushing it. You are crushing it. <laughs> All right. So we are back. Uh, Pastor Tubb is with me. Uh, you probably didn't see what just happened because I edited it out. So we had some technical difficulties, but I fixed it. And the only reason you know about it is because you said me. something. It's right. You ever have those right. people that say, hey, you wouldn't believe the stupid thing that I did and like nobody saw it. Right. And you're like, if you didn't tell me, nobody would have known. Right. You just did that. I did. I did. did. Because I believe in transparency. Then leave it in. And I don't want to. If you leave it in transparency, don't edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> they might hear me swearing. <laughs> oh, they never heard you swear on here right, before. Right, right. No, there's been once or twice, a few times. You know, Are you going to edit all of this out too? Is this uh, right, all right. of this is gone? It's going to go from your little intro too. Right. So <laughs> we're here today. We're going to be talking about terrorism. It's a. Uh, it, it's not a very pleasant topic, of course. So what's what do we got here? What's going on? What what is the book that we're going through? Remember, we're going through the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict, and what he does in there, he has twenty five different topics, and he spends about a paragraph on each one of them, just kind of giving you a really really quick idea of what it is that libertarians believe. And I thought, hey, that would be make for a great season. And so Pastor Tubb and I were walking through all these different topics. And we're just going to expand on, and we're going to have a conversation, and you get to be a fly on the wall. So let's go ahead and let's let's see exactly what it is that he says in the book, and then Tub and I will talk about it. So what it says: America's aggressive foreign policy causes resentment and leads to terrorism. We should stop intervening in places like the Middle East. We'd experience less terrorism. That's it. That's exactly what he says. What do we got? Is that it? Are we done? Yep. You have a blessed day, and we'll see how this plays out. Right. This is the shortest note. Okay, so here, I, I'm going to just tell you right now, like, I have a jumbled mess in my notes. It kind of goes all over the place. Right. If we get to it, we get to it. But if not, he, here's my thing. I think that what he writes, and I know it's intentionally the short little kind of almost blurb type of thing, mm -hmm. uh, but it, I think it's overly simplistic. Right. I, I think that, I think he's, I, I don't think he's wrong. I, right. I think that he has a good point there, but I think that when you keep it that simple and that basic, I think you leave a lot out. I, okay. I think you've made it because it almost sounds like if we just leave everybody alone, then everything's gonna be fine, especially in the Middle East. Right. And, and I don't think it, I don't think it's that easy. So what do you leave out? Uh, well, okay. So when I look at this, I you have to realize foreign affairs becomes very tricky. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I know that we we take well, I take I think you fall the same line of this isolation. So we'll kind of we're gonna come home, take care of ours. Best mm -hmm. of luck to you over there. Right. And I'm not I'm not against that, but at some point, you know, you have to deal. With other countries, like it's just it's gonna happen right. whether it's through trade or whatever it is, you have to deal with other countries. So are we isolationist or are we non-interventionist? I'll go with a look. Can, can we be both? Well, I mean, I guess we could be, but I think there are distinct. There's a distinct difference between the two, and I think the Libertarian Party members of the Libertarian Party are often called isolationist. Mm -hmm. And if you were to talk about them individually, then I think that might be true. A lot of people do just want to be left alone, like right. individually. Mm -hmm. But I think it, as far as what we're looking for as a country, it's more of a non-interventionist, not necessarily isolationist. 
So because, are we going to spend the next 45 minutes talking about which word we want to use? I mean, we might. Right I mean, is, is that, that would be is, is that what real... You, is this why you asked me to come over and talk about terrorism? So that's that you the, can say, no, Tub, you're using the wrong word. That's is that, the libertarian way. Th that is true. You are right. <laughs> the libertarian ways. I don't think this is... Okay, so if we want to go with non interventions okay. okay? I guess maybe in my world, in my crazy, simple little mind, I don't draw a whole lot of difference between them. I'm kind of like, hey, you do your thing over okay. here. We're good. We're going to stay over here sure. and do hours. So maybe for me... The okay. word is interchangeable. Okay. Maybe for smarter people, you go, no, stupid. Right. They're different. Right. Okay. So well, if you're I, listening, let me interrupt you. So if you're watching and you're not a libertarian and you say uh, isolationist, just know you might come across a libertarian who says, no, 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 that's not who I am. I am a non-interventionist. And so then what you need to do is you need to clarify and say, okay, how do you see the difference between those two words? But then there are other libertarians who are like, ah, eh, they're kind of interchangeable to me. And yeah, that's okay too. Yeah, let's say if you come to have this conversation right. with me, I'm going to be like, okay, in my mind, I'm going to throw them kind right. of in the same category. I'm right. like, oh yeah, this is and, where we're at. And that's fine because... The idea is to just know where the other person yeah. is, so that everybody can have a productive conversation. Yeah, like I said, like I said, I, I, I don't, I don't think if people bring this up to me, I don't think, I, well, well, hang on, I, which right. way are you talking about? I just kind right. of, in my mind, I guess I kind of yeah. understand it, but I guess you're right. But somebody who's not inside the party, be like, whoa, right. what do you mean by that? Right. All right, I'll keep all that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. All right, good. Uh, so here's what I have to I think: we have to realize, based off of what he put inside the book, mm -hmm. we have to realize that, especially that particular area of the world, um, they. Uh, have a lot of religious beliefs, mm -hmm. strong religious beliefs, not like fake Christians here in this country, like they're in and they're all about right. it. And, and so I think that for us to just say, it's only this, this is why they have a problem with this is because of our government interference and stuff like that. Uh, I think we also have to understand the, how religion plays into it. Okay. And, and they do have a different outlook on whether we should all live together and have the same outcome in life, stuff along those lines. So I think that factors in. I think they have a, a religious belief that factors into why they might be angry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think that personally, I kind of look at it and I go, I think they're a little upset about the American lifestyle as a whole. They're not big fans of how, or sometimes of our freedoms and how we do and what we culture engages okay. and accepts. So I think there's I think there's a lot more going on. In, in, in fact, uh, Bin Laden, look, I did a little bit of research here. Wow, look at all those notes. You see that? It's a lot of words. Yeah, but yeah, it's a lot of words. We'll see if they mean anything. But no, here's what... So, remember after the 9-11... I came prepared. Did, so, did, don't give, see, don't oh, give man. it up too much because they're going to go, wait a minute, when this is all done, they're going to go, I thought you said he was prepared. He's right. going to sound like prepared at all. So uh, this is the Liberty Dad Show with your host, <laughs> Pastor Tub, and the co-host, DL, who is not prepared. So, oh, we're in way trouble then. <laughs> all right, so here's what Bin Laden wrote after the attacks of 9-11. It says, Western support for attacking Muslims in Somalia, uh, supporting Russian atrocities against Muslims in Chechnya, supporting the Indian oppression against Muslims in Kashmir, the Jewish aggression. aggression. And he's saying these were the reasons of why they technically attacked us. Okay. Okay. And, and, and so I, I think that we have to say, okay, there's a lot of things that factor into this. I, I don't think it's simple. Um, well, if we leave them alone, everything will be fine. And so I think that for me, I kind of go, I think we have to factor in a number of other things here. It's not as simple right. as what they're saying. Now, how far am I leading this? Am I still going? Go, go where okay. you go. Right. You got some, you so got all the can, notes. Can, can we agree this then? This man has a book I, here. I, I, I'm on it. I, what did, I make myself did I comfortable. Somebody, yeah, just settle in a little bit. Right. All right. Should have brought a lazy boy. Can, can we agree? There's not room for it. Hey, can we agree that terrorism has changed over time? Sure. Like I started looking at him and go, okay, um, I, I think that at the beginning of this, terrorism had this one thinking, and it would kind of be the uh, the IRA, and they kind of blow up right. something real quick, and they go about their business. Um, so I kind of looked at that the things have changed over time. Um, do we see a future where terrorism is no longer about bombing something, but maybe because more of a financial attack? Could be. Like, do we start seeing cyber attacks, stuff along sure. those lines, and, and where they're no longer like, hey, you know what? Um, if we blow this up, what are we really doing? But if we cripple them financially, I think it, I, I think you might see it as a, a part of it, a part. Okay, but I don't I don't know if it would. Um, you know, I'm always hesitant to use. So when we think of a, and, and, and I hate to play the word game again, but when we talk about some terms, mm -hmm. they have very strong connotations. You know, when we think about terrorism, we we tend to think of like you know blowing people yes. up, yes, women yep. and children. You know, mm -hmm. people are in fear of their lives, and so then we when we jump and we say, okay, well, there's cyber terrorism. Uh, and I don't necessarily disagree. There is such a thing where people are trying to get you to be in fear, in fear. of something, right? Mm -hmm. And they might do it through a technological way rather than a bloodthirsty way. Right. But at the same time, I want to be, you know, I always try to be mindful and say, okay, well, I don't want to diminish somebody who 
you know, if if this person over here lost a loved one in this person sorry, if we lost a thousand in, bucks in, in a, in a, in a you know, bomb attack, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. and then so, this other person over here lost their life savings. Both are a tragedy in their own right, but mm-hmm. they are distinctly different. Yes, because the money we can probably more than you know the likelihood is that you can replace it. Yep. You can't replace it's a loved one. That doesn't that doesn't and, happen. And you know what's funny is I'll have it coming up here at some point where I go. I think that we've cheapened the word terrorism, right? Because we started using it to describe right. all of these other things. Um, I think that uh, I've said for years now. Even when I was teaching, I, I would kind of we'd have this talk inside the classroom, and and, and at one point I kind of asked. I said, "Well, hang on." I said, "Guys." Because they kind of, we got to this point now where people don't even think of terrorism anymore. It, they're kind of like, even us, even the people who are around for 9 11, we kind of become right. like, yeah, you know, whatever. Right. And, and, and so I was explaining to them, I said, well, think of it this way. I said, imagine if, and I hate to be giving ideas. So imagine if, you know, starting at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning, a single bomb went off in a mall. Right. Maybe not a whole lot of people killed, but. Okay. And then every hour after that, another one down the line, maybe you go down the Eastern seaboard and then maybe watch what happens. Right. Because I think that you're going to see both things. I think that then they start getting, that's a fear. Right. And, and that really what they want. They want, they want to change the lifestyle. They want to make right. people walk around, which would, once again, leads me into think that they're not just angry at the fact that we're bothering them. Right. They're angry at the fact of a lifestyle that we have. And they want us to right. shake us off our game basically. So if we're, if we're, if we're taking this idea mm-hmm. That one person or some group engages in an action to uh, make a society in uh, to put them into fear mm-hmm. with the hopes of changing their uh, behaviors. Yeah, that's kind of like a very broad definition of terrorism. Mm-hmm. So let's say that you had um, a government that was telling you about a virus. Okay. And they wanted they 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 expanded the you know they they made more of a deal of the threat in order to get you to change your lifestyle with that. Oh, wouldn't that be a form of terrorism w- w- on some because level? Isn't that what happened? Okay, like see, okay, c- c- okay. Why? Why? I have notes about this stuff. Now you're just jumping ahead of me. Okay, but that's fine because here's what happens. Isn't that what it does? Right. It they they want to instill a fear. Remember, we started right. talking about what happened in 9/11, and then I actually have notes on here about the Patriot Act. Right. And the Patriot Act did a lot of things to us based off right. the idea of what might happen. We start giving things right. up out of fear. Right. And you're right that with this virus, right. they instilled fear in us. Right. Okay. Guess what? To change the way we live and our actions right. and the things that we right. do. And then can we now say that our government is no longer worried about going over to the Middle East, but now right. they're perfectly content right. and terrorizing us? Right. And 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 if we want to be careful and, and or if we want to be mindful and not – use words like terrorism to describe both the person that lost a loved one in a bomb attack and the allegation that a government might be inflating the threat of a virus, mm-hmm. we could just simply leave it at this and say, okay, this, const- you know, the, the blowing up of people constitutes terrorism. Okay. And its its intent is to use um, uh, violence and then fear it's from the violence mm-hmm. to change people's behavior. Right. So then what we can say is, okay, well, maybe we won't say the word terrorist to government, but we can say, you know what? They seem to be very content taking a page from the playbook of terrorists. That's a lot of words. Right? So they're basically like, okay, well, we don't want to be full on terrorists because that's not what we do. That's not what we do. <laughs> that's not what we like, do. we're government. We're here to help, right? Like they would never do that. But they could say, you know what? They at least got that idea right. But, they're they're using fear to get what they want. Maybe we should use so, fear. But hold on. So couldn't right? we couldn't we help make this argument by using that extreme word that when we're talking to people like oh you mean like a, how our government's terrorists and, and then and then the, guess what you right you, the shock sometimes like right what did you just say right. And, right but I think that maybe keeping that word there and right. I want to make this very clear you brought it up you yeah made the absolutely connection. no no you made yeah. the connection between right. virus and terrorism right right I, and I'm cool with it right, right. I want to make it very clear but if sure, it comes sure. if it comes back at us. Well, that was really DL's idea, and I just I mean, you know, take right. and I played along with him. Right. Oh, so, no. oh, so now um, we're back to DL's the host. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, so, I got you. When things might go you. sideways, you know, it's DL's show. Right. So, but but inside don't worry, of, I get lots of blowback from plenty so, of things I've said. Maps? I'm already no, that one I was fine. Oh, like, oh that yeah, one you our expected, episode when you expected. No, it. our episode on maps did very very well. It's the it's my highest watched video now. Um, 
Freak. It's a little bit, a little bit weird, but I wasn't it's expecting a, that. It's a lot weird. And like, the comments were very, uh, were, were pretty rough. We're, we're not, real, not towards okay, me. I don't, not towards me, but here. anyway. Okay. All right, so so we're, we're, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. okay. But I've I've had other things where people have really been like, "What? I can't believe you said that. You're a terrible person." Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. So well. here's what we have. So mm-hmm. like, I have this, and in my notes, I put, "Let's bring the state side. Let's right. let's get into our country and what we look at and how we deal with things." Right. Um. I have on here, do you, like if you ask people if terrorism is even on their radar, I think most people probably tell you no. Right. I think I, th- I think they'd probably be like, nah, right. you know, like it doesn't, it's, I hate to say this, but it's worn off. Right. We've become numb to the 9-11 attacks. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, in fact, remember when they first started doing it and they go on there and they read all the names, everybody's like, oh, you know, this is horrible. Right. And now, and now you're right. like, oh, this is not all day again. Right. You, you know, that's kind of where we've become. Um, so I have been here. I said, has this become a word that... It's become too used and that it's losing its meaning. It's cliche now. Yeah, it's just kind of like, yeah, you know, everything's terrorism. Right. You know, and that's why I guess we can figure out if we're going right. to call the virus terrorism. Um, I, I think that we look at it and what it's doing, it, it's it's allowing government to kind of put more people into this group. Right. That when they can label something terrorist, now more people are lumped into there. And what's happening now, it's no longer based on necessarily even actions. It's right. based on threats or something along those lines. Right. And, and once again, the more people that can be lumped into the group, the more the government can do a certain action. Right. And that's kind of my fear that the more they broaden this word and this right. term, more people come under the umbrella. Like we're going through it now. Like, right. you know, well, they're white supremacist terrorists and they, they're going down these lines and they're right. lumping everybody into this. Right. And we have learned that by them... Dumping people into a group, they're allowed to treat and do things a certain way. Right. Even if they don't fall into that category. Right. So I think that that's the, the demeaning of the word right. is becoming a problem for us. Right. Well, I mean, it becomes like, you know, a lot of people might say, okay, well, if so-and-so is a terrorist, uh, we can send Jack Bauer. Did you ever watch 24? I did watch some of it, yes. Okay. So we could send Jack Bauer after him, right? And it's, yeah, I mean, they're a terrorist anyway. They they probably kill lots of people. So mm-hmm. if Jack Bauer roughs them up a little bit, no big deal, right? Like that, like people will think like that, mm-hmm. right? But then what happens, and and this is where I'm kind of going with it, not to suggest that it was that wasn't necessarily a good thing, right? But to say that once we've accepted that, and then we start broadening the term, then we're like, well, that person is, um, you know, what what is a new term that they use today? We'll say that person is terrorist adjacent, terrorist. right? Because there's a lot of terms like the, the adjacent. Is, there, is somebody a, really using that one? Not terrorist adjacent, but they'll say like. You're alt right adjacent. Oh, you're okay. All racist right. adjacent. Right. So that's like you're not quite there, but you're you're riding the you're, edge. You're, 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 you're right you're, up next to it, right? Okay. You're cozy with those people, so therefore you're adjacent, right? Okay. And so then we could say, well, this person's terrorist adjacent. Okay. Well, guess what? If they're terrorist adjacent, then maybe we maybe we don't rough them up as much as we do but the terrorist. They, they do have maybe, terrorist in their name. You know, ma- maybe the we of. maybe we tie one arm of Jack Bauer, you know, one of Jack Bauer's arms behind his and back, rough him up the best and, you can and, with one. Let him go with that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I think that becomes the problem with terrorism. Now to bring this back to a more global for a moment, <clears throat> but I'm already in my stateside part. Oh, you're good, you're good, because we're going to come right back to it. All right, all right. But just to just okay. kind of touch right, upon it real quick, this is this is this is the danger in labeling all these things terrorist and saying we've got to do something about it. Because if we go to country A and we uh-huh. say these are, there's some really bad, um, how do you say it, bad hombres? There's some bad hombres that we need to go over there and take out. And then we expand the word terrorist. It's the same concept, right? We're like, well, maybe, maybe we need to go to this other go country. Go to this country, is it? Yep. Right, because they were pretty friendly. They sold them some guns, you know, and so maybe we should go after them too. And then it becomes this perpetual, perpetuating that's the cycle, life, that's right? This, the Putting everybody in, under that right. title, mm-hmm. and then where we are now, because I'm gonna bring it right back to okay. the state side. You know, we're, we're we're starting. It seems like we're starting to see a little bit less in the conversation on terrorists. Like I'm not really, that, you know, like foreign terrorists. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I tend to believe that when groups don't have an enemy, they go find one. But yeah, we'll find. And and I, and I and I think that goes with any group. Mm-hmm. Libertarians, if we. Got the our world. Utopia. We're angry at the world. Right. We got our <laughs> utopia, or maybe we've taken a break from fighting the state and all these other bad actors, and then we fight each other. Yes, right. We're, people are always looking for someone to fight. I saw this back in the um, back in my church days, right? Like we'd be happy, we were content, we went out, we did some work in the community, we're happy, and then we're like, but then it just, I, I think the itch got us, and we're like. You know, those Baptists over there, they're not even, you know, whatever. You know, and it was just, you're always I just want to make it very him. clear that's D.L. turning on the Baptists and not the pastor this time. Right, All right. right, right. <laughs> Continue so on. D.L., 
Theo's the bad guy. No, no, I see yeah. some stuff about the Matrix. Say too, good night to the bad guy, okay? All right. But hold on. Wait a minute. So hold, hold, I, I want to see where you're tracking here. Yeah. On the topic of terrorism, you have just included the Baptists. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yes, Is that what you're yes, telling me? The Baptists are terrorists. Yeah, for us non-denominational people, you're right. Right. It's those evil Baptists. I see a message change right. coming up for Sunday. Oh, boy. But, so, okay. I'm so, going to be so, in for it now. So here be, yeah, and I will blame you for it. Uh, so here's what happens. So I, I believe it's, it, it's funny that we keep losing our freedoms mm -hmm. as Americans, and we think that's going to keep us safer from other countries. Because right. that's what's going on right now. Right. Um, I, I'm not sure that laws against us and mm -hmm. watching our people or surveilling our people is making it safe. I don't think that's what's keeping terrorists in line. No. And, and so I start looking at this. I go, okay, well, it seems more like the government right. has another purpose behind this. Right. The more that they can throw things under the topic of terrorists, the more things that they can take from us. Right. Because we've proven we will let them. Right. And, and I think that becomes the problem. So I have some... What, what I refer to as what ifs. Okay. Okay. I always like what ifs. I like to throw what ifs around the church. And it's not saying, hey, this is a problem. But what if this was? Right. Let's talk about this for a second. So what if? What if America has this continued kind of aggravation? That's how I put it. It's this aggravation with terrorists. And it's not so much about other countries. Right. It's about being able to do things against us here. Okay. That they they want to keep they want to keep us with some level of you know those people over there. Right. Remember how they told, they sold it to us? Well, we'd rather fight them there than fight them here. Right. Okay. Which sounds it like sounds it, great. It makes like, sense. Yes. Okay. I don't want to fight terrorists in my backyard. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather fight them in their backyard. Their backyard. Like and, hello, yeah. And, that, and and we fall into that. So what happens is once they start, once they said, hey, wait a minute, um, this worked. So we have to we have to keep this line of terrorism, and, and I think that we're coming under this area where they go, okay, the terrorists over in the Middle East—they're not terrorists anymore. They don't really bother us. Or we're kind of just doing our own thing. Right. They're like, okay, but we can't let this go. Right. We listen. We found a good one here. Is what they're right. saying. They're right. like, hey, we can't let this slip away from us. Right. So do they? Do you think that this is kind of government's way of saying, hey, wait a minute, the more we can use the word terrorist and terrorism. Right the more we can get involved in people's lives and take away their freedoms. Right. So it's interesting the way that you frame that because um, <clears throat> and, and, and you frame it in the same way that uh -oh. most people do, right? You just call me an idiot. Even myself. Me, uh, okay. Even myself. Oh, if I'm in times. the category of you, then we're fine. Right, right, okay. right. We're right. good. And that is to treat government as if it's some sort of entity that is sitting back and deviously plotting. Now, I think there are people that do plot things. There mm -hmm. are schemers in the government. Yes. They are looking to accomplish certain goals. That's the whole purpose of being there for right. them. Right. But I think that uh, I, th I think you, it's better off if we look at it in the terms of opportunist. So it's not really so much like, hey, if we call these people terrorist, then we'll be able to do this. Right. I think it's more like, you know what? I, I need to label these people terrorists because these other because the people that I need support from aren't getting it. So I, you know, so I think it's a little bit, it's, it's slightly twisted rather than this plot like, mm -hmm, how can I control this person? More like in this particular one instance, not like a grand scheme, mm -hmm. this one particular instance, how can I get this person to do what I want? Oh, well, I need to tell them this. And that's going to get them to do what I want right. in this moment right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Not necessarily this whole long scheme of, okay, I'm going to do this and this oh, no, and no. this uh, well, and this. And I think that's how it kind of comes, comes across. And I think that's what makes it so hard to sell to people. But I, I think that there there is a level of there's a particular party that plays the long game. Right. Like they do play the long game. Right. And they, they are 10 years down the road saying, hey, sure, we'll sure. get to this. And, and I think there uh, are some areas where that is absolutely right, yeah. true. And so, but I, I think you're right that in this topic, it's more of a, it's not like a constant, right. but they finally realize, hey, wait a minute, we got to keep this going right. on. Which, well, you know, what's funny is because then I get into, um, if we keep this idea of terrorists, we can't drop the idea of it anymore. We got to kind of keep this thing going. Right. Well, guess what that does? That keeps a continued military involvement also. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And we had that conversation already. Yeah. Uh, and, and so there, there is this desire. There's a lot. I learned years and years ago, and at the time I didn't understand it. My dad used to always say it. And he goes, he'd make it to the effect of war is profitable. Right. War is money. War is big dollars. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have to have. War is some, peace. You, yeah. So <laughs> as, as you start going down this road in order to keep mm -hmm. that kind of keep that machine moving right you, you got to feed it right you, you got something and, and so i think that there's this level of we can't drop the terrorism thing right because it worked 
Right. It allowed us to do a lot of things. It allowed government to keep a lot of wheels in motion. Right. Under that title. Yeah, I just I guess I look at it and I say it it feels to me that when we start uncovering facts, what we usually find is that, you know, the industrial war machine doesn't necessarily have this thirty year plan like, all right, we're gonna do all these things. No, put these countries. I think they're looking at just a little bit shorter mm-hmm. uh shorter vision out. Um and then and, and I think that kind of works well for us as regular everyday people because if we look at it in that way and we say, All right, Let's see where somebody's being opportunistic. Then rather than trying to worry about if we got their plan, their 30-year plan, their mm-hmm. 10-year plan, their their long game figured out, rather than trying to worry about that, just look at what's right ahead of us. What are you trying to do right now? Nope, that sounds pretty opportunistic. We don't need that. Period. End of story. Nope, that was too. But who's stopping that? Right. And, and, and I, but, well, I think the reason that we don't stop it is because we kind of get too, um, too, too dra- dragged down into the details. Right, you're trying to figure out it's it's why it's, it's where the conspiracy theories come from, right? You yeah. get all these conspiracy, conspiracy theories, mm-hmm. and you're like, all right, so we've got the Bilderbergers, and then we've got Bill Gates, and he's trying to you know make some vaccines to depopulate, and you got these long, drawn out plans, mm-hmm. and then we're like, we got to fight all this stuff, and I think it it makes it difficult to get other people on board because they're like, I'm not really seeing that, you know, I'm not seeing that end goal like you are. But I think if we were to back up and just say, hey, they said that we should go to Afghanistan and take out some terrorists, right? And we need to put boots on the ground and we mm-hmm. need to do this and we need to do that. Okay. And if we don't do that, then this is going to happen. And you right, got this. Right. And no, not if this, not if that. And none of that. Just what is in the moment that we need to address? Okay. But and then we continually just focus on what is it that you want from me now? What, where do you want my support okay, in this well, moment? How does that become realistic? How, like, I get what you're saying. Like, how right. do we come back to him and say, okay, I get that we have a threat right now. Right. How do we eliminate that one threat? Right. Get, so how, who's, right. who's going to do that? So I, I think that's part of the American people. And I think that's where we, we as libertarians need to really shift on how we communicate this message to people in the sense that we, we tell people, um, to focus on the here and now on this one little bit of information because it's easier to convince somebody of this one thing right now. Hey, this person, this this general, this president, whomever, they want to go and do this military action, mm-hmm. right? And they, they're saying it's for, you know, because there's terrorists, okay? And I think we need to discard because it, it's an easy sell if I think that those terrorists might do something in the future because I'm really, I'm, I'm getting hey. into speculation, well, okay, now here, now. Right? And with speculation, I don't need facts and evidence. All I need to know, all, but I think what we need to do is pull the reins back and say, look, let's talk about the here and now. What's going on? This person, you know, did this person, you know, was, is this the right person who uh, who attacked me? Yes or no? End of story. Do we have evidence for that? Uh, don't care about what they might do. Now, now, I just care about, let, did let they do this? In, in our kind of sitting back, letting them do non intervention, isolation, however you want to look right. at that. When. Trump bombed the vehicle that Soleimani was in. Okay. Okay, from right. Iran. Okay, I didn't know what he was doing. Most people probably never heard Correct. of him up till that point. Right, right. Okay, and so we took an assumption that what he said was true, and this right. is what happened. We just saw what happened when, when mm-hmm. the Biden administration just launched some bombs over. We go, oh, wait a minute, that was the worst right. people. Okay, so we took his word on that this is who yep. they are, this is what we're doing, and it was hidden under the guise of terrorist. Right. Okay, so do we fall back into our area again and go, well, you know what? He's not doing anything against us. Correct. Why are we the ones right. that are doing this? Right. So when you factor that in, because he did it under the guise of terrorist. Right. Oh, he's a terrorist. You have to do this. Right. Okay. But great. If he's a terrorist, but he's not doing anything to us and they don't really, his thinking was, well, he, and that's what, it, what a lot of it was. He's going to. Right. We, oh, he's right. about to do this. We've heard about where, this. And people will give into that because let's be honest, most people in, in libertarians may not like that this is a hard pill for them to swallow, but. Most people will would rather bomb somebody if they think that person will bomb them in the future. Like yes, most people will say, "Hey, if it's a matter of me getting bombed in two years versus me bombing you now, I'm going to bomb you now." Okay, right? Like if they really believe but that works that. off in an assumption, right? It does, and that's why I'm saying this is this is why I think playing into this. Um, let me tell you about this plan. Let mm-hmm. me let me go into this this theory that I had. This long skip all of that. Talk about the here and now. Look, this person is not causing us a problem right now. 
Okay. Okay. They haven't caused us a problem up until now. Up until- how how old was I can't even say his name. So- Soleimani. Soleimani. Mm-hmm. How old was he? He was like in his what fifties or something. Something like that. that. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know. So like you know, what evidence do we have that he had act? So if you're worried about what he might do in the future. Let's talk about what he's done in the past. Did he do anything to us in the past? Right. That, and you know, there becomes did he do anything, he had done anything recently? To us. Right. Like in the past? Was it any recently? Mm-hmm. You know, is there is there any reason up until this point? Because that's all, that's what we know. We don't okay. know, we know the, what future. the future. I mean, right. and, we can anything else. Uh, you know, if you look at Israel could have killed him within the next right. 60 days. Or, right. you know, we don't know. He right. could have just died. Some and, some, some yep. people could just, hey, I'm, and, sick, of, and I'm I think sick of you. Part of the terrorist conversation is that. A lot of it is predicated on this fear of what's going to happen in the future. Okay, so and we need to we need to pull that back in because when you start fearing what might happen in the future, you'll give in to a lot, a of, lot things. of stuff. A lot of stuff, exactly. So if we take the West Benedict line of "Hey, if we just leave them alone," mm-hmm. now I, I think there's I think there's a lot of truth inside of that. I want to make that very clear. Like I am not straying from what he said. I think he's right. right. Oh yeah. But I think to just focus on this area and say it's just this. I, I okay, we gotta go deeper than that. Right. But but more importantly, so knowing, doing the show. knowing what Trump did. To Soleimani, right? Should we be expecting some recourse? Possibly. And so then that's when you start going, which Benedict makes the point I mean, of if we would leave them alone, let them do what they're have, doing. We know exactly how we know exactly how this plays out because we can see it in our own friggin' country. Right, take the Bloods and the Crips back in the eighties. Oh, 90s, you gonna right? show me how how you do Crips again? Um, remember you talk about with well, my blue you know, shirt, my hat. Remember the right, black right. If I your... if I roll some gang signs here, okay, on camera. All right. I don't know who's local here in Jacksonville that may come after. They me. might find you at one of now, our meetups. And do I know some of the, at least some of the older signs? I do, but I don't know if I really should be doing it on camera. Well, they right? don't. You're the one bringing. I'm them Liberty up. Dad, I'm, not I'm, Gangsta Dad. Uh, right, not, really? Because when I see you, I don't go with Liberty Dad. I go with Gangster. That's right, a great Gangster right there. You see Doctor DL. I, I, I do indeed. Right. <laughs> so anyway, not your point at all. So right. your point was Snoop Double with, DL. With, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your plan was to not do oh, so much college. editing this this week. And guess what? You're going to do a lot of editing. Right. Bear in mind, you're talking about, about, about that shirt. And, and before we got started, I said, are you going to wear the dad I just got off the golf course shirt? And you're like, right. Yeah. I'm making gonna... fun of me on my own show. Like, really? It's like, I don't even know. <laughs> so, so, but yeah. So like. Bloods in the Crips. Bloods in the Crips. You've got like, the, so maybe the Bloods are like, hey, you know, th- that guy over there, he took out one of our boys, right? Uh-huh. And maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. So they go and they retaliate. Then what happens? It comes back again. Comes back again. Mm-hmm. And then it goes back and forth. And you have this constant cycle back and forth. And it's even worse if you're wrong, right? Because if I yep. come over and I shoot your friend for no good reason, your friend, and you know your friend didn't do it, and then I shoot him, now you're going to be extra mad at me, right? Yep. So if we go over and we kill people, now if we happen to kill somebody who's terrorized everybody in the, in in their area in their neighborhood and, uh-huh. and 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 also terrorized us we may not feel much repercussion from that maybe right but, but what if, if we, they're cool with him around but him? if in the process like, of killing him we kill somebody's innocent child yep. well now that person has got a grudge against cuz they're like look you're america and you got like all these crazy bombs and you could you, you couldn't send your SEAL team. You couldn't you couldn't figure out how to kill this person without killing my child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're gonna be mad. And you know what? The next person that rises up now can use not just future fear, but their past, past. fear. They can say kill my dad. Look what America did to you. Mm-hmm. You need to support me so that it won't happen again because I'm gonna get payback for you. Right, and so this is how that cycle. And then continues. we do it on our side also. Well, you right. know, they're doing this, they're doing right. this, but and you're saying that basically it's a stem of how long ago did it start? Right. So, but the okay, difference is the I, difference is we suffer a lot less casualties right. than they do. They do. Um, We're careless. How, how do we? How, yes. How do we break that cycle? I think we break the cycle by literally just looking at it and saying, first of all, um, other people have their own self autonomy, right? Mm-hmm. They can choose to support a warlord in their country, right? Yeah. Like it's 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 not our country. I'm not living there. I'm we're we're separated by an ocean, another country. We're, you know, we, we we've got all these things between. Yeah, you us were and not them. an immediate threat to us, right? They were not an immediate threat. Sometimes they don't want to be, right? And um, second of all, I think we have to we have to really re- reevaluate our foreign policy, and you know, this idea that we have interest and in, that we need to go over and pursue them interest. Our interests are not somebody else's interest. So if I go over to another country and I'm the president of the United States and I say, well, we need to do this thing because of whatever, that may not be the same interest that the people Update. there mm-hmm. have in mind. And we would not want that to happen to us. We wouldn't want some country to come over here and, to us and, say, hey, you and know, say, 
you know, we really like this resource that you happen to have. We need to make sure that you keep flowing it out to the world. So if you do anything to stem that flow, then we're going to punish you for that. We wouldn't like that, right? But that's exactly what we do. And then we make things worse because, you know, and I, I don't want to really get into all too much foreign policy because I'm not a, a total yeah, walk like on it. it. Like it's foreign policy is a whole right. big it, deal. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I will say um, America has a habit of using people and then discarding them. Um, Didn't we just see it in Afghanistan? Right. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. I that's mean, yeah. exactly what we just we did. saw. We, did. Uh-huh. We, we, we saw it there. You see it with, um, I, I think it's um, Scott Horton. We talked about it on a previous episode. He's, you know, really, really intelligent when it comes to foreign policy. Right. And he was the reason that I even learned that America over time had used the Kurds. And I guess there's like different groups of Kurds. And we would like use one, then we use another one, and we use another one. And then we would ditch them and leave them behind. And do all, we would do we all do, these we things. We do that quite often. Like, okay, we were just listen, like you're on our side right mofos. now, but now we don't like you anymore. Yeah. So right. I just if we arm somebody, because right. they're on our side right now, right. but another 10 years later, oh, right. you're not on our side. So guess right. what? Wait, right now you are so, like, wait a minute, I, I mean, we was just cool with each other. I, I mean, I guess if we want to say, hey, they hate us for our freedoms, we you know we expanded on that. It would be they hate us because we think we have the freedom to go and be jerks, that's, I, and that's putting it yes, stupidly I, I, lightly, right? I, I, but like we have we have the we have this we we believe we have this freedom to go over there and destroy their lives, interfere with their way of life, so that ours can be all, okay. So that so that we the risk of maybe right. ours not being okay. Right, right. Uh, uh, so so like I, I look at it, and I've mentioned before, even on here, I mentioned before that um, other countries don't want to be little Americas. Like they don't they don't have that desire to be like us, if, and we if tend they to have did, this they desire would be. Exa- exactly. So we tend to have this thinking that says everywhere we go, we put our hands in. They want to be like us, right? No, they they really don't. Right. Now they might want people gone. A certain people like, hey, but as a whole, we're okay with this. Right. If you look at Bin Laden at the time, a lot of the people were fine with him. Because he was actually doing a lot of good things with the money right. he had inside of his right. country, right? And they were like, "Dude, he's building roads and building hospitals and stuff like that." Like, we we we're good with him, right? And, and so, but we saw him differently, right? And us, like, we didn't factor in. So now, going back to what you were saying, you take Bin Laden out, right? How many people go? Oh, he was fixing to build us a hospital, or this is right. the guy who built our roads. This is the right. guy who did the now. Okay, now I hate you, right? Now I hate you, America, because this is right. what you did. To I us. mean, that's how a lot of mob gangsters in America. Mm-hmm. Have, uh, you know, were one of the reasons that they were successful is they would offer people, uh, they, they would do, they would help people, right? They oh, yes. made sure that people had food, they made sure that people had jobs or to, whatever the case, hey, you know, they took care of them, they and... took care of crime on the street. They were like, Look, if any crime comes on the street, you let me know, and we're gonna go break their legs, cut them off, and then throw them in the ocean. And, and if nothing else, then the next person goes, I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> right? You know, so and, is that kind of what we're trying to push throughout the world? Well, I, I think I think the anal- you know, to make that more of an analogy, you might say that, um, you know, you've got like say the Bin Ladens of the world or or anybody over there who's offering something mm-hmm. to the people that's around them to keep them from killing it. And, <laughs> like, and, oh, and wait a minute, we look at it and we say, okay, well, maybe you are doing some bad things. Maybe you're not. You know, whatever depends on the day, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going to go ahead and interfere and. We're going to interfere to the point where those good things that were happening to people no longer happen to people. And so then now those people are angry at us. Yes. They may have already had a bit of a grudge because maybe They've somebody like, you know, maybe somebody like Bin Laden or whomever uh-huh. told them like, hey, hey America's you know. a bad place. Mm-hmm. They're super duper immoral. You know, they, they've got OnlyFans accounts and all this other crazy stuff. Right. You know, Wait, like. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm not going to get to the. I, I... All right. I'm always tossing little lobbing missiles like, in there, right? Yeah, I'm right. lobbing missiles in there because I'm a terrorist. That you, so, oh, that, guy, that just a, became a see, clip. I, I have oh, a Jesus. level of fear by being around you, right? I and just so, paid a clip. And, and, and now here's the problem. There's where we're getting at with the word, right? Because I have this level of fear from you, right? You must be a terrorist, right? And, and can we agree, bringing it back to stateside again? That's the problem. Right. This word is right. becoming so cheapened that right. somebody would hear what you just said, ha ha, like this. Be like, you know what? You, you're right. right. He is well, kind we, of a terrorist. And, and we do I that. I do fear him. Nazi? Oh, we do throw the that same word thing around there all the time. People yeah. are like, oh, they're a Nazi. Or a racist. Mm-hmm. Or a bigot. Or a sexist. You know? Uh, and, or, you know what? Those are, those are terms that um, uh, tend to be lobbed at people that are on the right. Um, right, but uh, let, let's say lob in the other direction. Oh, they're uh, you know they're uh, they're, they're a slut, right? Like th- those were the those were the conservatives that... going in the opposite direction, right? They would say like every woman that was 
Oh, yeah. I, I thought you were at least going to go with, you know, they're socialists there. Like, I, I, thought that you were, I thought you were going to say that. Like, no, okay, you went with all, slut, though. Right, right, right. <laughs> but there's, there's, all kind of, there's all kind of terms, right? Like, like both sides do it, right? Both sides have Those terms Republicans that they just... Because, you're all a bunch of... Right, they're just like they're, they're socialists, they're commies, they're right. sluts. You know, they're. <laughs> I want to say slut a lot. I, I'll be I'm becoming one yeah. of those podcast shows where I'm like saying stuff just for shot just value. Like Did he say that? Like, oh, oh my goodness, God. Liberty you Howard what? Stern. What? Right, right. I'm the I'm the Liberty <laughs> Howard the Liberty Stern. Howard Stern. Ha- Howard okay. Stern. If he was more like Jeff Foxworthy, I guess I don't know. It doesn't you even make yourself sense. yourself a connection between Jeff Foxworthy and Howard Stern. Somebody, right. somebody in the libertarian world with all their memes and stuff, they're going to mesh your picture with Jeff Foxworthy and Howard Stern. And this is going to be who you are. All oh, right. boy. So, all right. Let me ask you this. Uh, full on conspiracy theory type stuff, because that's where we camp out at. We've, we've made the argument that there is a level of as long as we can label them with this, we can act a certain way. Right. We can get a certain amount of control over again. And since people, I said from the beginning, you kind of agree that we don't really think about other countries anymore as right. terrorists. We kind of, so now we can't let that ride. So is it possible now that we have these things going on in this country? Because terrorism is coming up a lot. Right. Domestic terrorists, they, they hide under all these right. other things that now they want that there. They, right. They, that government wants that title there because they've seen that title gets them more control. So isn't it fair to assume then that the government's throwing these out? They want these titles. They right. want the news to say these words. Yeah. Because that way they're, well, we got to react. We got to make right. a law. We got to do these right. separate things. So that I'm looking at this now and I'm going, why are we encouraging the use of the word terrorist with so many things it doesn't apply to. I think and I think it's back to I, that right I there. think we encourage it because it's really been um it's something that we've become accustomed to doing. Mm-hmm. And like I said a moment ago, like when I was using all these different terms, it doesn't matter what side you're from, what group you're on, it doesn't matter anywhere. People if you're in the Middle East, there's somebody over there that's you know, using some word to describe Americans and, you know, or, or infidels or whatever, whatever, what might, what have mm-hmm. you, right? There, there's some term that's being used to keep, to keep people the in evil here. America. Like, oh, it's this person and that person. And they're, you know, they're an infidel there's, and they're a, a infidel adjacent. Sympa- yeah, they're infidel right? sympathizer. And, right, yeah. they're a sympathizer. Uh-huh. They're this. And we're doing it over here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we do it politically. We're like, oh, they're a libtard or they're a... I'm trying to think of what's the other, you know, but, you know, they're, they're a commie, mm-hmm. they're uh, alt-right, they're whatever. And we, and we start lumping in as many people as we can in there because I think that's part of our human nature is to find enemies. And I think this is, this is what happens. And with terrorism, we look for enemies. Now, I think terrorism is a little bit more nuanced in the sense that it's not always about America looking for entry, uh, uh, enemies. It sometimes is us looking to pursue our own interest at the expense of somebody else. What do you mean? Um, well, if we want oil production to run at a certain level or something like that, right? Like we have interest in, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, we wouldn't like it if some other country right. came across and said, "Hey, you've got this particular resource that you're exporting. You, you, we need you to make pick sure it up." Like, are, are, are the fact that Biden going. came and shut stuff down? Right. They go, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, right. no, it's not what we're looking for, dude. You right. better, okay." Right. And so I think that when we have interest, it, it's along that same line. We look at it, and we're like, "Hey." We need you to keep doing something or not do something mm-hmm. because it doesn't work for what we've for got us. going on, mm-hmm. right? And so then we start interfering in that particular way. And I think that's where we get um, that's where we get some of our terrorism. Now, let's assume that we withdrew, we became our non-interventionist, right? Okay. And we didn't meddle in other uh, countries' affairs, right? You know, and, now, and I, think, I, I, I like the line that that Wes Benedict uses at the very end. And he says, we'd experience less terrorism. So I don't, and I, and I think that works well with what you said at the very beginning, which was, you know, there is some level of religious view mm-hmm. or cultural view and, you know, maybe even like, hey, we're going to take over, right? Like we're going to expand our empire right? because we believe that's what we're supposed to do. And so I think that there's still some of that and you might still see some level of terrorism. Right. Where people are saying, hey, look, we don't like the fact and I made a joke about it. But, you know, there are some cultures that will look at America and say, we don't like the fact that all your women are half naked or fully naked. Definitely. That's a real issue. Stuff along those lines. They may be okay with violence Uh to make it justified to them. Yep. Right. It's justified. So would we see terrorism in that sense? Possibly. But I think he's right. 
that we'd experience less. It'd be a lot smaller because I think the 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 unlike a thousand or two thousand years ago, the number the sheer number of people that are okay with utilizing violence to impose some cultural mm-hmm. standard right. are very few comparatively. Right. Right. So here's the thing. Like he, he's saying here that that our foreign policy makes it so that we have these terrorists over there. Okay, there's no denying that. But once again, our bigger issue is not terrorists there, it's terrorists here, or at least the labeling of terrorists. And so then I start looking, I go, okay, well, it's telling us there that if we take more uh, of this uh, kind of staying out of it, best of luck to you, however we want to look at that, whichever term we want to use for that. Right. So we say, how do we do that stateside? How do we stay stateside? Say, I, I, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you that title. I'm not going to right. get fallen. Like, how do we pull ourselves out of it stateside? Because now the term is becoming more right. of a domestic term than it is more before. I, I, I think we, I, I feel like we're on a downhill trajectory that we may not be able to stop. Okay. Because we've become too accustomed to using words so loosely. Right. And words have meaning. We and, keep forgetting that. And and I and I'm like. You know, there's like, what, 600,000 words in the English language or something like that? And we come up with new words all the time. So to me, I look at it and I say, there's no reason why we can't come up with an appropriate word that that describes a particular thing. Now, does that mean that we have to, you know, for every single small nuance, we have to find a new word? Not necessarily, but I do think that we should be more mindful of things and say, okay, this word in this particular case, it means this. And um, we're not going to use it. you know, if, if we think of it as vile, then we're not going to use it um, and abuse it to the point where it doesn't have the meaning anymore, right? And, but we're already there. Right. We're already, so we're already you there. Which means you can't unring that bell. So we can't unring the bell. Okay. But I think that what libertarians might be able to do is to start just slowly saying, you know, I, you know, first of all, we need to set We're this, not going to call we stuff need like it. We need to do that, mm-hmm. right? We need to set the standard and say, hey, look, we're very clear in when, when, when we're communicating. So, so you're saying I can't start the conversation by calling our government terrorists? Is that what you're telling me? I mean, you know, if because I kind of lo- I you like the shock value of it. You mentioned the shock value, and uh-huh. I don't mind shock value, but I think that once we've got the shock, and now we've got someone's now attention, be able to now it's time to reel it back in and say, yep. okay, look, you know, I said that for shock value, I wanted to get your attention. Now that I have it, here, let me explain to you why, why I said that. And yeah, I get it, terrorist. Probably not the most appropriate, but here's why I said it. Here's what they're doing, and what they're, and, and then we can go into an exp- explanation like, mm-hmm. "Hey, they're using fear in the same way that a terrorist would." That's why I said it. That's exactly right. Now, that was a great point. D- does that, that make them an actual initially? terrorist? Was that initially, I, I my think, point. I think so. It's good stuff, right there. You, you, I, feel like, I feel like I should have put that. in. You know, go ahead. Do, so do I, do um, I, I, I think we're done. I think we're done. Okay, okay. Shut, shut this thing down. All right, so we're gonna shut this down. So. I hope you learned a lot. I hope if you're a libertarian, some, you were can listening. We, can we hope that they learned something? Something. Out of this one here, something. they might not have learned a lot. I mean, I this guess, is not that I topic. A lot is too much to ask Yeah, that's right? way too much to ask right. We hope that, that you learned something. Right. So, um, we hope we didn't terrorism. make you dumber by watching this. Terrorism, if you're a libertarian, I hope that you listened to this and you found a new way to talk to your non-libertarian friends about terrorism, about pay, uh, paying attention and being mindful of words. If you're a non-libertarian, I hope you understand where we come from when we talk about terrorism and when we talk about how we engage with other countries and how we prefer to be non-interventionist or just basically keep our nose out. And with that, um, thanks for listening in and until next time, we're out. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.